Now, in the diploid cell, the chromosomes occur in these homologous pairs. Similar looking pairs of chromosomes. So this cell would be diploid with a homologous pair. Pair of chromosomes. So this is a diploid cell. This might be from a mother, for example. And then we have another pair of chromosomes from someone else who might be the dad. Again, these are homologous pair. They should be the they should look the same. And it's another diploid cell. Now the chromosomes carry the genes. So the genes are present on the chromosomes. For example, here we might have a gene for blue eye colour. But because the chromosomes are in pairs, the genes are also sort of in pairs as well. And we'll have an equivalent gene on the other chromosome in the same position, in the same loci. But this gene is not necessarily the same. Because the genes occur in pairs, a pair of genes are called the alleles. So, for example, this gene here could be for brown eyes. And this gene here could be for blue eyes. And what I've done is I've put the B in capital letters because the, br the B for brown is the dominant gene. Now, a dominant gene is one which will be expressed if it is present. Conversely, the small b for blue eyes is a recessive gene. Now, a recessive gene is a gene which will only be expressed in the absence of a dominant gene. So what we see here in this parent is that we have one gene for brown eyes, which is dominant, and one gene for blue eyes, which is recessive. So we see the two genes are different. So we would see that this potential mother, for example, is heterozygous. Heterozygous means that the two genes are different. There's two different alleles, two different forms of the gene present. If they were the same, we would say she was homozygous. So homozygous would be the two genes being the same. But here we see they're different. Now this is a potential dad here, so let's presume, let's presume he's the same. Let's presume he's got a gene for brown eyes and a gene for blue eyes. Now, if this couple want to reproduce, obviously, first of all, they have to make gametes. So the homologous chromosomes will divide into the separate gametes. So in one gamete, if this is the mother, we'll have an ovum that contains that chromosome and an ovum that contains that chromosome. They will have divided into separate gametes. But they're going to take the genes with them, so the blue will be there. That's the gene for blue eyes. And here's the gene for uh, brown eyes. And it's the same with Dad. If he wants to reproduce, he has to make the sperm. The diploid somatic cells will have to reduce their chromosome numbers and become haploid gametes. But again, the genes are going to go with the chromosomes. So some of dad's sperm will contain big B for the dominant gene for brown eyes, and some will contain the recessive gene for blue eyes. And then as we know, these can pair up in various ways. So that one could pair with that one, or that one could pair with that one. Or alternatively, that one could pair with that one, or that one with that one. 
Now in this case, we'd add that chromosome there to that chromosome there. These chromosomes will both become present in the new zygote. But I think you can see there, you're gonna get a B from there. And that one, if we follow that, you're going to get another big B. So we can see from that that this child, or the child that would develop from this zygote, is big B, big B. That means they have two copies of the normal dominant gene. Now, we could describe that as their genotype. A genotype is the genes present. The phenotype is what you actually see in the individual. So this individual who's big B, big B, genotypically would be homozygous. Phenotypically, they would have brown eyes. But in this case here, we've got a big B and we've got a small B meeting up. So we can see that this individual, genotypically, they're going to be heterozygous for eye colour. They've got two different genes. But phenotypically, they'll still be brown eyed because brown is the dominant gene. In this one here, we've got a small B from there. And we've got a large B from there. So in this case, again, we're going to have a zygote which can grow into a child. Again, heterozygous for eye colour. But phenotypically, they will be brown eyed because of the presence of the dominant gene. But in this case here, we've got a small B from there. And we've got a small B from there. So we see that this child is going to be genotypically homozygous and they're genotypically homozygous for the recessive gene. Therefore, phenotypically, they will have blue eyes. And some people do this in, um, in a Punnett squares. So we could take the B and the B and the B and the B in this case and we could put them together in this square. So B and B will give us big B, big B, B and small B from there, small B from there, big B from there, small B from there, small B from there, and it will give us the same, the same result. So in this particular case, where we see that these are, parents are both genotypically heterozygous for a recessive gene, we see that we get the classic three to one monohybrid ratio. Three children with brown eyes and one with blue eyes. But of course, this is just probabilistic. This is the probability that we would expect from such a marriage.